what is meant by the term bond order calculate the bond order of n2 o2 o2 plus and o2 minus what is bond order bond order means it is the number of electron pairs shared between two atoms the number of electron pairs shared between two atoms in formation of bond yeah while forming a covalent bond that is called the bond order fine and how do we calculate this in mo theory we calculate bond order by a formula this is number of electrons in bonding orbital minus anti bonding orbital upon 2 i gave you two definitions first one is a very fundamental physical definition should i repeat that let me do that what is bond order bond order represents the number of electron pairs shared between two atoms the number of electron pairs shared between two atoms which are joined together by a covalent bond right how do we calculate that we calculate by by mo while using mo theory we have a very simple and beautiful formula we can use this and calculate it okay so can we calculate the bond order of n2 o2 o2 plus and o2 minus yes we can what do we need to do first thing we need to write down their electronic configurations wow so let us begin with nitrogen nitrogen is sigma 1s2 Now please remember one nitrogen has seven electrons so two nitrogens have together 14 electrons so we have to write till we reach 14 electrons sigma 1s2 sigma star 1s2 sigma 2s2 sigma star 2s2 2 and 2 4 and 2 6 and 2 eight electrons are gone and we had a total of 14 so we are just left with six more electrons fine now if you consider nitrogen it is pi 2 py pi 2 pz 2 2 and sigma 2 px oh my god what is this for the lighter molecules like nitrogen or molar masses below nitrogen you have pi orbitals having lower energy as compared to sigma 2 px if you count 2 plus 2 4 and 2 6 and 8 14 electrons this is done okay this is the mo configuration for n2 yes this is the mo configuration for n2 using the formula bond order is equal to number of electrons in bonding orbitals minus anti bonding orbitals upon 2 this is 2 and this is 2 this is 2 and this is 2 so actually they will cancel 2 plus 2 plus 2 how much is this this comes out to be 3 oh wow the bond order of nitrogen is 3 yes which means that n2 has a triple bond and indeed by valence bond theory also we do see that n2 has a triple bond it's consistent this is the first part n2 what about o2 let me modify for o2 in case you happen to get o2 now please remember o2 is a heavier molecule so all the initial mo configurations don't change but this is the way it is written sigma 1s2 sigma star 1s2 sigma 2s2 sigma star 2s2 sigma 2px pi 2py pi 2pz pi star 2 py pi star 2 pz now please remember o2 has 16 electrons 8 till here 9 10 11 12 13 14 now we just have two more electrons which need to be added and these two electrons will be one one each oh my god and that is why because we have unpaired electrons two unpaired electrons oxygen is paramagnetic it has two unpaired electrons and this is the biggest triumph initial triumph of mo theory valence bond theory could not predict unpaired electrons in o2 while mo theory very naturally organically predicted it on its own what about bond order plus 2 2 2 this is fine 6 and 
this also you get. We get two electrons more in antibonding orbitals. Oh my God. So what, what happens? Well, the bond order gets reduced to a value of two. So N2 has a bond order three, and O2 has a bond order two. That's it. We have two more. Yes, let's do them. Once you've written down O2, now it's very simple. Can we write down O2 plus? Yes. How? How do you change O2 to O2 plus? You remove one electron. You just remove one electron, right? So just take away one electron, make any one of them zero. Okay. So what happens? This changes. I'll change color to indicate this has changed. So bond order now changes to 2.5. Oh my God, it's a fractional bond order. That's okay. Don't make so much of a hue and cry about that. It is. That means when O2 will change to O2 plus. The bond order will change from 2 to 2.5. Bond order will increase because electrons are being removed from an antibonding orbital. If electrons enter antibonding orbital, antibonding orbitals actually destroy the pre-existing bonds. So when an electron is lost, it's pretty good. And we get a stronger bond, which is highly welcome. So O2 plus has a bond order 2.5. Five. How lovely. What about O2 minus? Now in that case, O2 minus has how many electrons? O2 itself had 8 plus 8, 16. And O2 minus means plus one more. You have 17 electrons. Can we try to fill in 17 electrons here? Let's try that. If we are trying for O2 minus, it would be 2 plus 2, 4 and 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. What about here? 15, 16, 17. You have put two electrons here. Why not two here? You can put two anywhere. One of these orbitals will have two electrons and the other one will have one electron. It doesn't matter which one has how many. That's it. One, one of them has two, one of them has one. What about the bond order? Well, this changes to three. Oh my God. Then. The bond order, unfortunately, drops down to 1.5. Because the electron, the new electron has entered the antibonding orbital, the bond order has been reduced. The bond length also will be correspondingly increased. O2 minus will have longer bond as compared to O2. And O2 will have longer bond as compared to O2. Plus, as you can see from these electronic configurations as per molecular orbital theory.